I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awakening, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord." So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant David and grant him an entrance into that land of light and joy in the fellowship of your saints through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your inequity, who heals all your disease, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Lord, the Lord works vindications and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our inequities. For as the heavens are high above earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father, his compassion for his children. So the Lord has compassion for those who fear him, for he knows how we were made. He remembers that we were dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field, for the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children's, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. 
The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, those mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord. All his hosts, his ministers that do his will, bless the Lord. All his works in all places of his dominion, bless the Lord, O my soul. The second lesson, 2 Corinthians. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory by, beyond all measure. Because we, do not, we, we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed, clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed, when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked, for while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are, we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. First of all, thank you for coming. Um, my dad, David Wister, only lived here in Ponte Vedra for five years. So I know many of you are here today because you know my mom, Carol, or because you know me and my husband, Lou. Um, and we appreciate you being here to support us and all of our family. Um, for those of you who didn't know my dad, uh, he loved to tell stories. Um, and he told the same ones over and over. So I thought I'd share a few of those stories that highlight who he was, an outdoorsman, a Marine, a volunteer, and an investor. Um, and for my family that is here today, I apologize. It's highly likely you've heard these stories before. My dad was an avid outdoorsman. He spent his whole life fishing and shooting. Summers he spent saltwater fishing for striped bass and the dreaded bluefish on Long Island Sound, and then in later years on Cape Cod. Dad was also a great shot. He liked to hunt ducks, pheasants, doves, and shooting sporting clays over the years became his real passion. He was involved with several gun clubs and he loved to compete. But my favorite story he would tell about hunting was one from his childhood in New Jersey. He and some buddies of his in elementary school set traps in the woods and would walk to school in the morning and check on them. Well, one morning, they discovered a skunk in one of their traps. Not quite sure what to do, one of them suggested that if they held the skunk's tail down while pulling him out of the trap, that it would likely not be able to spray them. Boy, was that bad advice. Um, covered in skunk spray, they debated what to do. What would be worse, being late for school or facing the wrath of their mothers? So they ran to school. Dad said they were halfway down the hall before the principal chased them out of the school and sent them home to face 
for said mothers. Uh, my Nana apparently wouldn't let him in the house and threw a bar of soap at him and pointed at the garden hose. She was awesome. <laughs> Dad's advice was to be careful who you take advice from and don't ever make your mother that mad. Um, my dad was a Marine. He was the first in his family to go to college, attending, attending Lafayette College on an ROTC scholarship, and then serving in the Pacific region in the early 1960s. While he never spoke much about his service, he did form deep friendships that he kept up for many years. The story dad did love to tell about the Marines was about how bad the food was. He mentioned that a lot. And the advice dad imparted from the Marines was that if you had an onion and some hot sauce on you, you could make anything edible. His love of hot sauce was well known and family and friends loved to gift him with the hottest bottles they could find. Um, my dad, was a, he was a dedicated volunteer to several organizations. He was heavily involved with Ducks Unlimited and with fundraising for Lafayette College. His biggest passion, however, was for the library in whatever town he lived in. He was an avid reader who always had a book in his briefcase for the train ride home and could be found reading in the living room with a decaf iced coffee most evenings in the summer. He served on the board of public libraries in Old Greenwich, Connecticut and in Chatham, Mass. Um, while he passed on to me his love of reading, the lesson dad taught us about volunteering was actually from his time in the Marines. He was stationed at Quantico in the sweltering summer heat, and a superior officer asked if anyone knew how to handle a typewriter. Dad put his hand up eagerly, thinking he'd get to sit indoors doing some desk duty for a few hours. Instead, he found himself unloading a truck full of typewriters in that <laughs> sweltering heat. His lesson here was simple. Always know what you are volunteering for before you raise your hand. Dad worked for years as a financial advisor on Wall Street. He taught us early on about saving money and investing, and he helped us open bank accounts for our allowances from doing chores. He loves to tell the story about how at age six or seven, I demanded that the bank teller show me the vault where my savings would be kept before I would turn it over, and that I was very concerned about whether I'd get my money back. I bet some of you who know me well can picture that. Um, he also loved to tell a story about how, as a six- or seven-year-old, he was walking in town with a quarter to get a haircut. He stopped by the firehouse to chat with a, a fireman out front who asked where he was going. The fireman then told him he'd give him a haircut for a nickel. Dad thought about it and decided that sounded like a good deal and that he'd have money left over to get an ice cream and some to save for another day. He didn't think it was such a good idea when he got home, and his mother saw that he had had his whole head shaved. My Nana marched him down to the fire station and got him his nickel back. Again, his lesson to us was that cheaper wasn't always the best deal, and also, don't ever make your mother that mad. Dad, we will remember you always. We loved your stories, um, and we'll try not to make our mother that mad. Good morning. It, uh, it seems that I've fallen victim to one of the biggest blunders of all time, which is to not converse with your cousin prior to uh, getting up to speak about your uncle. Um, it is a great pleasure to be up here uh, talking about my great friend, my fishing buddy, my uncle, William David Wister Sr. Um, it is always an enviable task to try and compress a lifetime into a few minutes. Um, but whether you loved and laughed with the man as Dave, David, Dad, Grandpa, Uncle Dave, or even Yellow Submarine, you knew of a tremendous life lived and lived well. Um, for me, all, all the great things about Uncle Dave, I think, can be summed up in his stories, and that's where I was going with it as well, too. Um, a brilliant mind formed from an adventurous childhood, his service in the Marine Corps, years in finance, and a love of history and countless outdoor endeavors as a hunter and a conservationist, there was seemingly never a topic that he couldn't slide into and share an entertaining experience or two about it. Uh, his favorite topic, of course, was his kids and grandkids 
Heather tells a story about pillar catters as a child and the adventures of young Wilbur are probably still discussed these days in, uh, in the town of Greenwich. Um, and then that carries on obviously with his grandchildren, uh, Trey, Paul, Cassandra, James, and Peter. I thought for today, I thought I might bring up a few remembrances from my family, my side of the family. Um, I've got years and years of fishing experience with him and uh, uh, there were always amazing stories that were shared out on those boats. You, uh, you get a kindred spirit together and, and a group of them and men. And interestingly, these grown men had names like Cowboy, Light Horse, Sawdust, Toothache, and Jigger, to name a few. Fishing does funny things. Uh, but in that, I also wanted to bring up some remembrances from my, uh, my family as well, too. My mom remembers adoringly the day uh, that she got to be uh, the maid of honor at Aunt Carol and Uncle Dave's wedding, and she remembers distinctly looking up at the love in his eyes as he gazed on his new bride. And she also remembered very fondly that he, Uncle Dave, always chose to call her his little sis. My dad similarly, similarly uh, always looked at Uncle David as the older brother he never had and always remembered fondly him in the way that he was one of the kindest people, in his words, that he's ever met. My sisters will talk about a big and impressive man, and he certainly was, the Marine. And when we would come to visit in Connecticut as uh, kids, they both loved being picked up by their ears by Uncle Dave. It was a lot less painless than it sounds. And, <laughs> and also trying to sneak up and surprise him while he would read the afternoon paper in his chair. My nephew Danny remembers learning how to cast a fishing rod in Cape Cod very fondly, jumping off the docks and checking the fish traps. My brother-in-law Roger, bonding over finance, which was a pretty easy one for the two of them, but really came to love and know Dave in a share of all things spicy. And this competition that, uh, that began between the two of them in trying to outdo each other with hot sauces culminated in the finding and discovery of Dave's Insanity Sauce, um, which if uh, anybody's enjoyed that in their lifetime probably shares some of the scar same scar tissue that I do inside of my mouth as well. Uh, Miss Kim, my father's wife, remembers Uncle Dave's kind smile and his welcoming nature. She said she always felt at peace with him even though she didn't really know, them, know him all that long. My wife, Elsa, also shared a fondness of Uncle Dave and his welcoming nature and also loved, shared a love of food, beg your pardon. Uh, they loved and enjoyed comparing notes on how to make the perfect steak and debated endlessly on what was truly the best pie at Marion's Pie Shop. Cherry or peach? Uncle David always favored peach. And as for my own kids, Jack and Lily, they also too remember learning to fish with Uncle David, wetting a line in Crow's Pond. Jack loved discovering the Hardy Boys through Uncle David, and Lily had a special place in her heart for the memory of the magical maple syrup jar that somehow always, it was this big by the way, that always seemingly was refilled every morning, magically. As for me, I always go back and think back on those days in, in Long Island Sound early on and that, uh, that, <laughs> that group of men that I hung out with and, uh, and learned so much from. So I hope that uh, everybody will help keep Uncle David's tradition alive and and keep telling these stories because they're they really are magical. Thanks.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Carol, Bill, Heather, and family, nieces and nephews and in-laws, on behalf of this Christ Church family who love you, um, we gather on this holy day to give thanks for David's life, for the profound impact he made on his family, the stories he left, his friends, his community, his country. And today we entrust David back to God. Last week when I met with Carol and Heather, they shared stories um, about David. And I was um, really amazed and I pondered all the different seasons of his life and was struck by a number of things. First of all, his deep work ethic and service for community. The college graduate, the first in his family, a captain in the U.S. Marine Corps, and a successful businessman who just shared his leadership skills, time, talents with his church, his community, the scouts, the school, the library, the clubs, and his deep, deep reverence for the simple and profound things in life, the things that mattered, creation, spending time outside, the beauty of waterways and wetlands, skeet shooting, fishing, exploring the written word, a good book. But most importantly, and just hearing Heather and Todd speak, David had this deep love for community and family. Carol, his loving wife of 61 years, his children, Bill and Heather, grandchildren, extended family. He had a full and well-lived life. And the depth and breadth of his life is impossible for any of us to capture today. David was so many things in his life like we all are. Son, husband, dad, grandparent, uncle, businessman, saint and sinner. And throughout every season of his life, even in these past five years, as Louis body dementia heartbreakingly took toll on his body. David was first and foremost a beloved child of God, grafted into the life of Jesus at his baptism and claimed as Christ's own forever. In the church, we mark time by marking liturgical seasons, and today we are in the season of Easter, a time of joy as we reflect on the incredible power of Jesus' resurrection, assuring us, gathered here today, of the promise of eternal life with God and those we love and those we see no longer. And at its core, at its core, the message of our funeral liturgy, our prayer book teaches, is a liturgy for the dead, is an Easter liturgy, this service today finds all of its meaning 
in resurrection. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we too shall be raised. That is good news, even as we mourn that in Christ, God brings life out of death. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we too shall be raised. Death is not the end. And isn't that the deep truth we need today as we gather? The solace and the comfort, the hope that we have amidst David's death that we glimpsed on Easter Day when Jesus rose from the dead He gives us hope that with David, we too shall be raised. That is our faith. That is our hope. And it comes so clearly into focus this day as Jesus speaks this bold promise to a weeping Martha. I am resurrection and the life. A promise for his heartbroken and beloved friends, a promise of hope that sickness and death do not have the last word. I am resurrection and I am the life. It's a promise not just for Martha and Mary and Lazarus, but a promise for David and all of us. It's a promise not just for some event down the road, It's a promise that you and I can trust today. We can trust it in every condition of our lives, in health and in sickness, in the joys and the sorrows, in our failures and in our successes, in our questions and our doubts, in our sinfulness and faithfulness. I am resurrection. I am life, says the Lord. And this beautiful encounter in John's gospel reminds us that resurrection is possible each and every day. Yes, God holds us in death. And yes, God's resurrection is possible in life. We can actually choose to see and live resurrection lives, to heal and strengthen relationships, to extend kindness when all seems lost, to strip away all the things that we get so caught up in that are not important, and pay attention to this beautiful life, to this world we have been given, and to participate fully and care for it. As David lived a full life, a full life, I think that he would want all of you today to go out of here and live a life that is full. And I would add resurrection lives today. Lives, yes, indeed, rich in laughter and storytelling and things to remember, good books, some fishing, and family. His stories and his legacy remain with each of you. In a few moments, we'll gather around this table of the Lord and we will celebrate Holy Communion, a foretaste of God's eternal home where God has prepared a place for each of us and where David now rests with all the saints and all those we love and see no longer. This is not all there is. I am resurrection and I am the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Amen.
I believe, believe in, in God, God the Father, the Father Almighty, creator, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Prayers of the People for our brother David, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for David and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raised the dead to life. Give to our brother eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. Hear, Hear us, Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother David. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for David and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to him eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. And now, my sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. And now, uh, in the Episcopal tradition, we turn our attention to the um, sharing of Holy Communion. But before we come to that, uh, a couple of um, notes for how we'll proceed after the service. Uh, we, um, David was entitled to uh, military honors, and we will uh, see them done. Uh, right after, we'll follow the, um, the family out into our atrium and uh, just follow us, uh, and the... Uh, Honor Guard will uh, then uh, do the honors. Uh, and then right after, uh, you're invited all uh, from the, by the family uh, to a reception right after. And so uh, on behalf of the family, I hope that you will uh, come and be a part of the reception as well. Uh, as I said, now we turn to the service of Holy Communion. And um, it's really important for us to say, especially to uh, visitors and guests who uh, may not uh, be familiar with um, about uh, with the Episcopal Church. We want you to know that no matter who you are, uh, whatever church you go to, or if you don't go to any church at all, you are welcome. Uh, and in fact, invited uh, to participate here uh, for, in Holy Communion. Uh, as we always say, this altar belongs to Jesus Christ, not to us, and that means that you are welcome here. Um, it's more than that, though. Um, this, when what we believe in Holy Communion is that, yes, we are communing with each other in the bread and wine of Holy Communion, uh, but also that we are communing with Jesus Christ, uh, 
and we are communing with those who have gone on to heaven already. And this is uh, really important in when we do uh, memorials. So we believe uh, when we um, celebrate Holy Communion, it's not just us and Jesus, but also David is, uh, is receiving uh, the grace of Holy Communion as well. And so I hope uh, with those thoughts in mind that you will come uh, and uh, participate in this holy mystery. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. continues with the great thanksgiving. You can follow along on page 7 of your service bulletin. Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with David and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
Our post-communion prayer is on page 11. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in the kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Where, Where sorrow and pain are no more, night is signed by life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, not a sign, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant David. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.